Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So we have seen a decline in overall whale activity across most crypto assets, and that has become more and more noticeable. Guys, this is from Santiment. Peak 2024, we were seeing up to 100,000 plus transactions per week for Bitcoin and Ethereum compared to recently. So guys, here are the statistics. Bitcoin, between March 13th and 19th, we were seeing uh, 115 Point one thousand whale transactions. Now these are uh, specifically whale transactions. Okay, so large quantities of Bitcoin. And now uh, between August twenty first and twenty seventh, sixty point two thousand whale transactions for Ethereum during the same period. One hundred fifteen thousand. Uh, so about the same, actually exactly the same. One hundred fifteen point one k whale transactions. And then from that same period in August for Ethereum transactions, we only saw about thirty one point eight thousand whale transactions. So. What he's saying here, be mindful that a decline in whale activity doesn't necessarily mean that they are dumping or that prices are likely to drop as a result. Top addresses notoriously become more active during times when volatility is at its highest. So that is something we have to realize. You know, we aren't seeing a very volatile market right now. The exuberance isn't really there. What volatility generally denotes is, uh, you know, when we do see that volatility, that means a lot more people are investing in cryptocurrencies and that is what causes the large swings. So when there's a lot of FOMO, a lot of people are interested in any type of cryptocurrency, obviously the price shoots up. And then when everybody is dumping, that is when price goes down. So here's just a graph of those whale transactions. And you guys can see from the orange and the red uh, bar graphs here plotted alongside this uh, Bitcoin price chart, you can see how high those transactions were back in March and now how low they are today. Compare that though, guys, to what was going on back in March with uh, Bitcoin price, comparing that to today. Bitcoin in and around that time frame. So this was March. Guys, we were seeing Bitcoin at all-time high. Now we are seeing Bitcoin retracing significantly from those all-time highs. And from that high, guys, today we are actually down about 20%, 19.89% from those highs. We actually did go a lot lower, especially back on uh, August the 5th. Monday, August the 5th, we did dip down 32.79%. But we have retraced since, and so Bitcoin is recovering. We have to remember this because this is like the calm before the storm. Overall, among activity that is happening from whale sentiment feed data still indicates a steady flow of accumulation despite less overall transactions. So uh, whales are still accumulating. Here is another one from sentiment, guys. Bitcoin has shown signs of life as the S&P 500 is paused for Labor Day. So yesterday was a holiday, despite it being Monday. The stock markets were not open. And what did we see on the Bitcoin chart? Well, Santiment is saying here, if I zoom in here on the chart, this was the, uh, the Monday from yesterday. So this was the daily candlestick from yesterday. You guys can see Bitcoin did actually move to the upside. And we can see that with a steady pace. And they are saying that is positive news because it is not actually relying on the stock market to move. They're saying here, without the reliance of equities, that is a promising hint for the sector's strength. Combined with uh, growing trader uh, bearishness and FUD, there are promising signs an upcoming rebound is near. So here's just uh, another chart just denoting that. Peak discussion rate during early August crash. When the crowd was most polarized, by uh, dip buyers were vindicated. And you can see that in blue over here. And now traders are bearish towards Bitcoin for the first time since mid-July, which increases likelihood of a price rise. So guys, hopefully we see the turnaround very, very soon. You can see neutral sentiment is growing a little bit here, not by much. We're still in that neutral category. We're at 47. Market cap is up by a little bit to 2.07 trillion. 24-hour volume that is down to 51.31 billion. Bitcoin dominance growing steadily at 56.4%. And uh, generally speaking, you know, with the Bitcoin dominance, this is, uh, you know, this is another indicator here. Here, let me throw this on the daily so I can show you guys. Bitcoin dominance generally does keep climbing, climbing, climbing before we see a peak. Now, I have uh, identified some resistance levels here that we could possibly hit before we do see that altcoin move to the downside. I know some analysts are saying, you know, we're never going to see Bitcoin dominance go back in the 70s um, at all anymore, just because there are so many other cryptocurrencies now that are bringing more to the table. And so uh, institutional investors, they're getting savvy. Uh, the crypto space is getting savvy. A lot of people are now investing in other cryptocurrencies, not just Bitcoin, even though the mainstream uh, narrative is suggesting to invest in Bitcoin through the ETFs, so on and so forth. You can see a mix of red and green right now on the charts. So again, a fairly steady day, fairly stable day, I guess, in crypto. Not really too much to write home about. The uh, the altcoin market isn't uh, isn't really moving too much. 
but there are signs that the altcoin market is going to rip very soon. XRP, though, has actually made uh, some increases yesterday alongside Bitcoin. You guys can see that daily candlestick for XRP. We did see a bullish day yesterday. I'm thinking it's uh, just following the Bitcoin price. And so that is positive news. Although right now, as of the time of this recording, we are only seeing XRP trading just shy of 57 cents at 0.569. So not terrible, not the greatest. I will take it though. Uh, you know, we're hoping we are going to see XRP rally some more in the coming weeks. There has been some news though coming out of Korea, guys. Wrath of Kahneman here posting this. Naver is reporting that on August the 3rd, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said that he met with concerned legislators from both sides uh, and heard judges express dismay about Gensler. So uh, before we move to Korea, I wanted to just mention this. So there has been some big news coming out of Korea, but uh, Brad Garlinghouse, David Schwartz, and I believe Monica Long are all there for uh, a new groundbreaking announcement that is looking very promising. First, though, here's what they said. Brad Garlinghouse, chief executive officer of the American virtual asset publisher Ripple, who found Korea CEO Gary Gensler, SEC, uncomfortable feelings were revealed to the chairman. So this was translated from Korean, so the translation doesn't sound great. However, I'm going to try to uh, to muddle through this. Uh, he has been in recent years. He said there was a legal dispute with him, and several times uh, he criticized Gary Gensler openly. Garlinghouse, he said at a meeting uh, of the indulgent reporter at the Grand Intercontinental Hotel in Samsung, Seoul, on the 3rd, the term of the office of the Democratic Party's Vice President Kamala Harris is the coming U.S. president election will not be guaranteed and he will leave. You might bet on it. So essentially what this is uh, saying here through this uh, terrible translation is that uh, if Kamala Harris does get in, Brad Garlinghouse is even saying, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that Gary Gensler is going to stay. As a matter of fact, it means that Gary Gensler is likely going to leave. So um, they are suggesting, no, this is not a surefire bet for Gensler. And uh, well, his job is on the line. We've heard uh, murmurings and rumors of this. Uh, over the last week or so. Anyway, let's see if I can glean more from this article. He has met with uh, other major leaders of the Democratic Party. Uh, at now, even many Democrats have lots of virtual assets. So it's suggesting that uh, the Democrats now are realizing, okay, crypto legislation needs to be uh, hammered home and uh, we can't have any more of this nonsense. The SEC said he had serious concerns about the excessive regulation uh, in addition, Chairman Gensler added that the atmosphere of judges criticizing the term digital asset securities is tag one. I don't know what that means. Garlinghouse, the CEO, uh, it has done now. It will continue to criticize those who are against the law and who do not com uh, comfort to the sound policies of the United States. Okay, this is a terrible translation. I don't know how they could uh, get away with this. Anyway, I think you guys get the point, though, even though uh, it doesn't sound like I'm making too much sense here. I think you guys get the point, you know. Now it's coming to a head. Gary Gensler is in the hot seat. And, uh, you know, even with Kamala Harris, Gensler has been criticized by many, uh, many politicians, many people who are not necessarily in the pockets of the big banks. Of course, the crypto community is a very critical of Gary Gensler. And now it looks like it could be his last hurrah. And uh, even Brad Garlinghouse has commented on that. So I uh, wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman here for pointing that out. I think uh, this is a better or maybe it is a better translation, at the press conference held at the General Intercontinental Hotel in Samsung Dong Seoul on March the 3rd. CEO uh, Barad Garlinghouse did say, even if Kamala Harris becomes vice president of the Democratic Party in the United States presidential election to be held in November, Gensler's tenure will not be guaranteed. I've met with a lot of key leaders in the, Democrat, uh, the Democratic and Republican parties, and even many Democrats have expressed serious concern about the SEC's overregulation of virtual assets, he said. He added, judges are also criticizing Gensler for using the term digital asset securities, which uh, is, is a term that is kind of ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense at all. Along those lines, though, Brad Garlinghouse did uh, continue with the press conference. So this still coming out of Korea from Michael Branch here. Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, addresses the company's legal victory against the SEC, stating there is no credible path for the regulator to challenge the core ruling. So now moving to uh, the SEC and the ruling against Ripple and XRP, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, addressed the company's legal victory against the SEC. Speaking at this conference in Seoul uh, during the KBW 2024 event, Garlinghouse addressed the prolonged uh, lawsuit. The SEC and Ripple have been embroiled in the lawsuit for nearly four years, 
And guys, here's a quote. We don't know whether or not the SEC will file an appeal, Garlinghouse said, acknowledging the ongoing uncertainty. The SEC has a 60-day window from the judge's August 7th decision to file the appeal. So 60 days would bring us uh, all the way to October the 7th, roughly. However, Garlinghouse expressed confidence in the strength of the ruling, uh, asserting, regardless of whether they choose to appeal, we do not see any credible path for the SEC to challenge the core ruling, which is uh, that XRP in and of itself is not a security. And I think that was the main uh, thing for Ripple. They wanted it to be very, very clear that XRP was not a security so that they can move forth with their plans. Garlinghouse hopes that the judgment will signal the end of the SEC's aggressive approach towards cryptocurrencies in the United States with the possibility of a change in SEC leadership following the upcoming elections, he anticipates more constructive uh, engagement between the regulatory body and the crypto community. Uh, here's another quote. I think uh, that, uh, sorry, I think that's what happens. I think that what's happened around the rest of the world really is indicative of the opportunity outside of crypto more broadly. Garling has remarked, highlighting how the U.S. is currently lagging in the global crypto race. He expressed optimism that this legal victory will eventually be seen as a speed bump in the continued growth and adoption of crypto and blockchain technologies. Many traders may be fearful that XRP could take a big hit in the not-too-distant future with the speculation that the SEC will appeal Judge Torres' decision to impose the $125 million penalty on Ripple. I think that uh, while we do have a pretty good shot that, uh, you know, this is really not going to affect XRP price moving forward. I do think XRP will be participating in this bull run for many reasons, not like what happened in the last bull run. I mean, the United States uh, had a difficult time participating because of all the on-ramp and off-ramps. They were closed off when uh, when XRP was delisted from a lot of American exchanges. And that uh, really did affect the, the potential for XRP getting up to above new all-time highs. Now, that said, guys, Remember, in the last bull run, XRP still did get up to about $2 per coin. We did still see that top up there of about uh, $1.95, $1.96, give or take. So not too far off, actually, from uh, former all-time high. Uh, if I were to measure that, that was only 40% uh, off the all-time high from the last time. And again, this is when the SEC was suing Ripple. And I do also have to remind you guys that it was also a point in time when XRP was pretty much the only cryptocurrency that was being sued. So um, probably the worst crypto, I got to say, probably the worst cryptocurrency to have been in during this period. But guys, this time it is different. This time we are starting off in a positive place. XRP is already averaging out at the bottom uh, a lot higher than it did in the last bull run. So that is also positive news. The low point here uh, during the beer flu was about 11 cents. And uh, for XRP, the low point here was about uh, 28 cents. So we are already up higher, significantly higher here, up 151% higher than we were starting on the last bull run. Plus, we do not have the SEC lawsuit looming overhead. So positive news there, I think. But this was the big announcement, courtesy of Michael Branch. Ripple has announced major forthcoming developments in the programmability of the XRP ledger, targeting early 2025 as a pivotal moment for the platform. So this is the latest news that just came out of South Korea. The initiative to expanding programmability on the XRP ledger entails two major advancements, beginning with the introduction of native smart contract capabilities directly on the XRP ledger mainnet. This capability still is in its research phase, uh, but it does represent a foundational shift in the ledger's architecture, aiming to enable developers to uh, implement smart contracts that can execute automatically without central oversight. Simultaneously, Ripple is nearing the development of the XRPL EVM sidechain in collaboration with Pierce's technology. So that was an announcement from a couple months ago. The XRPL EVM sidechain is expected to go live on the DevNet soon, promising a significant acceleration of programmability features in early 2025. This sidechain will bring Ethereum, the Ethereum virtual machine capability to the XRP community, allowing developers to employ familiar tools and programming languages, thereby broadening the XRP ledger's appeal to the global developer community. This is what uh, this is the official statement there from Ripple. So guys, this is big news. Programmability on the XRP ledger. A lot of people had uh, had a lot to say about this. Yoshi Takakatao, the CEO of SBI Holdings, he was even uh, retweeting this out yesterday. Expanding programmability on the XRP ledger. Ripple did uh, post an insights blog just uh, describing how this is going to improve the XRP ledger's uh, versatility 
And also, I mean, this just ties in the demand for more XRP utility. Guys, Ripple and the broader XRP community are committed to introducing advanced programmability, including smart contracts, to the XRP ledger development ecosystem. So this move aims to provide builders, entrepreneurs, and users with additional customizability for a variety of use cases. So this is what this is all about, if you guys were wondering. Uh, programmability on the XRP ledger will improve through uh, two key developments, the introduction of the uh, smart contract capabilities, which uh, we know is already in development from, uh, from months ago now. They want it to be interoperable with the EVM sidechain, uh, expected to go live in the coming months. So these advancements will complement each other to create a robust, versatile ecosystem capable of supporting a, a wide range of applications. The XRP ledger is renowned for its exceptional efficiency in transferring value, bolstered by a stable, secure, and robust infrastructure. This is underpinned by a decentralized framework upheld by a global network of validators and a transparent amendment voting process to enable new layer one features. So guys, these are the features that they're uh, that they're bolstering here. So they include escrows, NFTs, authorized trust lines, payment channels, uh, a decentralized exchange, and the AMM. So a lot of the things that we've already kind of known about, but here is, uh, I guess this is the official announcement that they really are working tirelessly to develop this and to get this out very soon. Uh, they were saying here, what was it? Uh, it was, well, it was in the last article, they were saying that this is going to be out by uh, by early 2025. So Guys, that is all positive news. All these applications, it sounds as though, are coming together now to create a more viable XRP ledger. So existing smart contract standards, such as hooks from the XRPL labs, lay an important foundation that can be iterated upon to enhance mainnet capabilities. This framework allows developers to leverage the ledger's core strengths while using smart contracts to customize functionalities to meet specific needs, streamlining development, and fostering innovation. Some of the main considerations for mainnet programmability are permissionless, no need for an amendment to deploy a smart contract. So these are the key features. Uh, easy customization of native features, easy learning for new developers, minimal impact to performance and cost for infrastructure providers. Ripple, in concert with the XRP Ledger developer community, will evaluate the best way to meet these requirements on mainnet and publish an XLS proposal for this broader view. You guys can see down here too that they are connecting with the Axelar network, another uh, another recent development within the last week. And here, this is what's really important. This momentum is set to accelerate further into early 2025, making a significant year for programmability on the platform. This sidechain will bring the EV VM compatibility to the XRP community, allowing developers to employ familiar tools and programming languages, thereby broadening the XRP ledger's appeal to a global developer community. And guys, there is uh, so much more here that I, uh, I will link this in the description of the video for you guys, because there is a lot to digest here. Uh, Brad Garling has come out and even said, you know, with new programmability in the works for the XRP ledger, something the XRP community has rightly been asking for, and the growing opportunity for Ripple's enterprise products to serve crypto native customers such as the Futureverse using Ripple Custody, the foundations of crypto infrastructure serving real world use cases are steadily becoming more robust day by day. Uh, even Monica Long did say custody is a critical entry point for tokenization. Everyone from big banks to crypto natives need secure and compliant infrastructure to power enterprise use cases, excited to further our partnership with the Futureverse. So Ripple has also announced that they are partnering, a more in-depth partnership with the Futureverse. Ripple is on the ground this week in Korea and Japan, starting off with a few key announcements, all in service of the goal to strengthen the foundations of crypto infrastructure to support blockchain utility and usability for institutional adoption. So we've got AI, the metaverse, that tech company Futureverse is partnering with Ripple to custody uh, securely, uh, sorry, to, uh, to, to custody, securely custody its assets. Futureverse has already adopted the XRPL NFT standard and it uses XRP as the gas token on the root network and is integrated with the XRPL DEX to supply network liquidity. So that is, uh, uh, that is linked there from Business Wire News. You guys can check that out. I will link this in the description if you guys are interested. Ripple and the broader XRP community are committed to bringing new programmability, including smart contracts to the XRPL dev ecosystem in 2025. So guys, it sounds like it is uh, coming around the corner, or at least they're going to be working on this throughout 2025, hopefully to get something off the ground, some real world utility off the ground by the end of 2025. 
Uh, through the XRPL EVM sidechain already in the works, as well as explore, uh, exploring native capabilities on the XRPL mainnet. And then we've got the uh, the UBI initiative that has come out as well. The wrath of Kahneman here saying, you know, wow, Ripple is advancing a commitment to the XRPL programmability smart contracts natively. In addition to the EVM sidechain, they will evaluate the best way to meet these requirements on mainnet and publish an XLS proposal for broader review. He comments down here, you know, you can see the authors working hard to include diverse voices they put for EVM sidechains and it's the ecosystem, how importantly uh, they mention an XLS that involves the community and uh, notes hooks as well. Importantly, this too for business, though it may be a long way off, this is potentially epochal for the XRP ledger. So Rath Kahneman here saying, you know, this is not going to happen right away. However, this is going to be quintessential, a, a pivot, a, maybe a, a huge change for the XRP ledger, which really will uh, perhaps get more adoption of the XRP ledger in the mainstream. Lots to be discussed here. Does it? Uh, does the sharding subnet patent play into this? Uh, no seed compromises. Whatever may come uh, laudable to see some commonly voiced things touched on. The considerations that will govern development, and so I did mention those earlier. Also, don't miss the uh, XRPL EVM sidechain is nearing live development on the DevNet. That's exciting uh, because we're seeing this progress with Pierces. Uh, not sure what momentum further accelerating early 25 means, unless it's a suggestion of live deployment without having to give a firm date. So that is the date that Ripple gave us further into early 2025. So guys, this is a process. Some people wondering uh, more about the timeline down here. Uh, Rath Kahneman saying he's honestly surprised. I thought the need for speed would keep the XRP ledger lean with programmability plugged in from other places. Uh, Milo here saying he's bullish. Tensa Gizla here saying, why has it taken so long to get to this point? By the time all this will be built, it'll be 2030 and it will actually be affecting the price. Maybe by 2035, we'll see a bull run. It feels like Ripple and the Ripple dev team are playing catch up. So, I mean, this is probably a big uh, question that's on a lot of people's minds. Is this going to affect price sooner? Or are we going to see something come out of this sooner or later? I mean, what is that timeline? And guys, again, this is why I have decided to keep a portion of my XRP in cold storage, but also I'm going to be selling uh, a portion of my XRP during this bull run. And my targets are going to be dependent on a lot of things. For more information on that, you can find me at patreon.com slash working money channel. It is only $5 a month. And uh, over there, I'm sharing my crypto journey with all my Patreon subscribers, all the cryptos that I hold, uh, where my where I'm going to be selling those cryptos. So you can check that out if you're interested. Anders here brought this up. OK, Brad said years ago that Ripple will become the Amazon of crypto. And what he is saying is this is the key. OK, programmability coming to their main chain. XRPL is a natural extension of this. But realize this is a long game. It likely won't translate into any live products with real customers for years so could we be seeing that large valuation down the road as uh as uh gizla did say or was it uh yeah tensa gizla did say down here 2030 to 2035 is that when we're going to be seeing these exorbitant xrp prices he says though i might be one of the few ones who is more excited about odl than anything else as of now guy on the earth saying you know don't understand how anyone can be excited for anything on the xrp ledger as the, at this stage We've had new tech features, partnerships, and projects on the XRPL for years. I've been here for nearly eight years, and honestly, I just fail to see what everyone is so excited about. Anders saying, you know, what you have to consider is that Ripple was locked up in a lawsuit for the last four years. So it's almost like it was a wash for the last four years. Uh, you'll never have any major bank using ODL at scale without being sued by the U.S. government, especially considering their conservative nature and highly regulated environment. So there are going to be a lot of factors that uh, do play into XRP utility. This is a long play, though. I do think uh, we will see something great come out of this. And guys, again, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Make sure you do have a plan for exiting this bull run. And for more information, you can find me patreon.com slash working money channel. I have a feeling that my cash out strategy this time around is going to be better than it was in 2021. That's just my opinion, though. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.